I once had an engineering interview where I was asked what the difference is between traces and spans. I kind of stumbled through a bit, so let's fix that. Before we dive into the complexities, let's get crystal clear on what we're talking about, and let's make this super simple. Think of ordering food from your favorite food delivery app. From the moment you click order until the food arrives at your door, that entire journey is like a trace. It's the complete story of your order from start to finish. A trace is exactly that in your application. It's the entire journey of a request from the moment it hits your system until you send back a response. Now, it might travel through multiple services like databases, external APIs, but it's all part of one single trace. But here's where these spans come in. In our food delivery analogy, spans are like those individual steps. So the restaurant receiving the order, the chef preparing the food, the driver picking it up and driving over to you. In your code, spans are the individual operations that make up your trace. Each span represents a unit of work like making a HTTP request, querying a database, processing some data, calling another service, and a whole lot more. And just like how a delivery driver can't start until the chef finishes cooking, spans often have that same parent-child relationship as well. Every span knows its parent, how long it took, and if errors occurred thanks to context. Together, these spans create a complete picture of what happened during your trace. So they're like a family tree where the spans are the family members connected to their parents and they can all have multiple children as well, but they're all part of the same tree, the trace. So now that we understand what traces and spans are, let's look at why people often get them confused and why that can actually be an issue as well. So here's something I see all of the time. Developers will say I'm adding traces to this function when they're actually adding spans. And you know what? I used to make the exact same mistake. The confusion is understandable. Both traces and spans track timing and operations, and they're incredibly similar as well due to their linked nature. But here's where it goes wrong. It's like saying you're completing the order when you're actually still cooking it. Remember, the trace is your entire order start to finish, the complete story of a request, whereas spans should be your individual steps for that request, so cooking, delivering, and more along the way. Now, this confusion isn't just about being pedantic and the semantics as well, though. It can cause real problems. If you implement traces where you should have been adding spans, you risk losing context between your services, you risk being able to construct the full flow, and you risk having misleading data as well, and a whole lot more. For example, if a team was struggling to debug a payment processing issue because they had 20 separate traces instead of one trace with 20 spans, they might spend hours trying to piece together what should have been a single, coherent story. So let me show you what I mean by using Jaeger, which is a popular observability tool developed by Uber for viewing your traces. So here I've loaded up Jaeger with one of my example applications, and you can see we have a payment service here. So if I go ahead and view the traces that we have for my payment service, now since I'm in control of this, I know that there's actually been one payment made through my system. So I'll go ahead and click find traces. Now what we get up here is the graph of all of our individual traces. This is a little bit confusing the way it's currently set up because I don't understand the difference between traces and spans in this example application. So each one of these should have actually been a span, but instead it's a trace. So we can see uh, pretty much immediately is it's pretty hard for me to go ahead and find out what happened with one single request. There's no top level that I can click into for the request. Instead, I've gone ahead and made each individual system its own trace. So we've got the validate payment service, we've got the check payment auth service, we've got get payment config. Instead, what this should have been is for my single get request to make a payment, it should be one trace and I should be able to click into that and see my spans. So for example, for log payment, if you click in here, we can see the individual spans that we have on that trace of log payment. So we've got the format log one here, and then we've also got the write log span as well. And you can see the individual amount of time that took and that child parent relationship as well. But as I mentioned, we don't have that top level for this. So say there was an issue or a slowdown with something and we had loads of requests, it would be really hard to actually see what the issue was, where it went wrong and what request actually caused that. We can see there's an error in this process payment system up here. And if we click on that, you can see it's within the handle email span and then the nested. But again, it'd be really difficult to see which HTTP request actually caused this because I've split up that single request into a load of different traces. So let's go ahead and see what this should look like instead. And there we go. This is the example of traces and spans done correctly. If you remember, I sent one single request to my payment service, and now we're only getting one single trace for that entire get request that I sent off to the service. This is a way clearer way of viewing things, and you can go ahead and see the full journey now as this properly represents that. So we can click into here. We can see the trace was this get call up here, and we can see all of the individual spans that occurred in that trace as well. So we have the same thing. We have the validate payment, validate format, and validate range. But before, where this was a trace and it was hard to see what kicked that off as it was lacking the context since it was own, its own trace, we can now see that this was kicked off by this get request, and we 
can see that it's validate payment. Then we have a net child span on that, a validate format and validate range. And we quickly go in as well and see where the error occurred. So on this get request, there was an error. It happened in the handle emails function here, as you can see. And we can go ahead and see what actually occurred in that as well. And you see how this is a way clearer view of being able to see a full journey in your application by using traces and spans correctly. You can even go and see the trace graph. And this is sort of like that family tree that I mentioned earlier. We have our get request over here in small, and then you can see what that kicked off. It kicked off the get payment config, the check payment off, and then all of those individually kicked off their own spans as well. And you see how that all leads into this one single request as well. This was a view that wouldn't have been possible when we had all of these as individual traces. All right, then let's bring all of this together with three key points you need to remember about traces and spans. Number one is think about the journey, not the stops. A trace is your entire request journey, like a road trip from start to finish, and spans are your stops along the way. Never create multiple traces when you really need spans within a single trace. Next, parent-child relationships matter. Always connect up your spans properly using context. A disconnected span is like a mystery stop on the journey, and you don't know how it fits into the bigger picture. So make sure you're using span context and make those connections explicit as well. And lastly, instrument with purpose. Don't just trace everything just because you can. Focus on those critical paths, performance bottlenecks, and error-prone areas. You want to target quality telemetry data over quantity. And here are the two pitfalls I often see teams fall into as well. The first one is creating new traces for every operation, and the second one is not propagating your context between these services. Instead, make sure you're creating spans for operations within a trace, and then always make sure you pass trace context into your service calls. If you want to dive deeper into traces, spans, and all of telemetry, here are the resources I actually use. OpenTelemetry's official documentation has a load of great examples, and it's an absolutely great read if you want to learn more about telemetry. And the Distributed Tracing Working Group as well has some excellent patterns for traces and spans. If you're working on a distributed system, what your next step should be is to go ahead and audit your current tracing setup. Make sure you're looking for disconnected traces that should be spanned and make sure you're getting the full picture of your requests that actually matter to you. So go ahead and drop a comment below with your most common tracing challenge and also go ahead and tell me some of your common issues. And hey, if this helped you to clarify traces and spans, go ahead and give it a like. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.